good morning everybody um, thank you for having me and um, primarily here on the invitation of my good friend dr anurag batra um, uh, i think uh, it's faster to get from delhi to bombay than to get from uh, a meeting in uh, sahar side to the santa cruz side so that's a good lesson for the morning um nevertheless i think two two people have spoken already uh, uh, in the sense dr anurag batra has spoken about his thoughts but he has used uh, uh, the og uh, of digital in india nandan's uh, presentation so very little stuff for me to say most of it could be repetitive so i'm going to skip a lot of those but here is the the underlying couple of themes number one indians are going digital like never before whether it's a geo effect or uh, in general a, a, a economy waiting to happen when our government took over in 2014 the new government we had almost about 15 crore internet connections today we are close to 90 crores and i have some data on you know what is the cost of data both globally and in india and how it has come down but how it has spurred consumption in india data consumption and it's it's, it's through the roof and and especially if you travel to comparative countries in africa in latin america in central europe then you understand what we get we don't realize it today uh, you know uh, we don't even think that we we this uh, this 1 gb a day data consumption um, costs us anything it's probably it's very very less less than 10 cents a day and um, 10 cents a day is about 8 8 rupees a day 250 rupees is a pretty good data plan in india Uh, you go outside you are watching your data consumption like crazy because the data is still very expensive we were 155th on data consumption and cost 155th today we are the lowest cost of data in the world lowest cost and the highest data consumption per capita in the world happened in less than 9 years it's it's not a it's not a miracle there is a geo effect but the geo effect also has the what is called the digital public infrastructure at the back of it and that's the most uh, the biggest thing that uh, what dr batra and nandan have always talked about india has revolutionized the world from the two thinkings and if you want to read there's a hbr article i wrote in 2017 on this there have been two global thinkings how do you build digital economies or digital platforms the number one thinking is what we call today probably we didn't have the insight in 2016 and 17 to call the data for profit the data for capitalism approach where i used to live and work the silicon valley of the world great innovation innovates to the top billion um the rest of the people are left out of that digital economy um the second approach had been an approach which india has banned june 20 2020 we banned all these platforms coming from a neighbor of ours from the northeast and we don't operate none none of those and we don't miss them by the way people ask me often do you, do we miss them we have so many of these startups in india some of them represented here who have replaced them all of them and that that is platforms for capitalism or data for capital uh, data for surveillance and that is the, the two very dichotomical different approaches data for profit data for you know uh, which is the the us approach the shenzhen approach was always data for surveillance and and use it in different manners india came out and said we are going to use data for development and that's been the big change in global thinking today suddenly with covid with all the conflicts going on everybody has understood that technology can be weaponized uh, a small data point that we are producing and we don't produce small data points we produce huge data points can be completely weaponized um if you don't have control on it in fact as we speak today india has passed the personal data protection act in the lok sabha it's slated to be presented to the rajya sabha today should be uh, should be a hard work for last 6 years that it is going to get passed today and uh, and that's a big thing uh, we today uh, from 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 um, um, from tomorrow onwards on whenever the uh, the president notifies the gazette india will be one of the few countries to have a data protection act along with a techno legal framework already ready for it now that impacts all your digital marketers there is no omnibus data permissions that can be taken purpose will get defined you cannot use an app x to switch on a torch 
pick up all my contacts and send a marketing email to them or the loan sharking apps which use my contact book to name and shame me if I have not paid my uh, loan back on time the social engineering that they were able to do will become pro will, will, be, will become illegal basically so there is a lot of policy work being done and and I think I can share being a policy maker being in the government for many years um, that India has perhaps one of the fastest policy making as a large largest democracy in the world that itself is tedious but you know um, but we've done very well especially when it comes to digital policy making and and two of course along with that um, the vision of uh, of the of the prime minister of india to lead digital india and three the technical capabilities what dr batra was talking about we would in nine to you know in early in mid 2014s 15s when we looked inwards towards India, we were a 2% growth con uh, domestic consumption. All of us were export oriented. We were only thinking export, export, export. There were five or six unicorns in India, if, if at best. And we were always thinking greener pastures. That has completely changed today. 120 unicorns, 87,000 registered startups, 22% domestic consumption. And that is completely different. You know, uh, Dr. Batra talked about, I was at MyGov and we said, let's do digital marketing. It's, it was not something that was even registered in DAVP, which is the government's arm to do digital marketing. We have changed that completely now. So that's why one of the big spurts from the government also you're seeing is, is digital marketing. We have to use all methods and means available to us to reach out to our citizens, to re reach out and communicate whatever we can. So with that, let me quickly go over certain uh, presentations. India will be the youngest country till 2070, by the way. So uh, a round of applause to all the young people over here. You, you are going to ensure that we succeed. You are going to really ensure we succeed. In, um, you know, 65% 60, of India's population today is less than 35. Our middle class, so, you know, India is another, the world looks at income pyramids in a very, very different way. They look at the rich, the middle class and the poor. India is perhaps the only country, and this is breaking up of India's 240 million households, 24 crore households. Uh, we look at the middle class in two different sectors. We, we have the rich, um, we have the middle class, we have the aspirational class, and of course the, uh, the, the deprived so far. What we look at the aspirational class of people who have, we've got them out of the, of the poverty uh, line, and push them to become aspirers for a higher middle class. So in a way, the lower middle class, higher middle class, uh, upper middle class has been bifurcated into aspirational class. This is really, you can see, this is really a very big category of a new aspirational class which wants to do things in a different manner. This income pyramid is the reason why India chose to do the things that we have talked about that everybody has started off, the digital public infrastructure, the data for development. Because the global platforms start from the top. Who did, who, when, when for example, a company like Facebook got launched, they, you needed a smartphone, you needed a laptop, you needed an internet connection. They were targeting the top, the, the blue, right? The top millions, uh, family owners to, you know, to, to have all these devices and tools. When we started building our digital architecture, we needed to think of the bottom of the pyramid. That is fundamentally different from anywhere, any, any country, any society in the world that has built uh, digital platforms. We thought bottom up. We thought of how we can include the poorest of the poor into our digital economy. And that has been the core of digital India. You saw Minister Ravi Shankar Prasad who stayed as the longest uh, minister for digital in India as the Minister of Information Technology and Electronics. And you know, he said something which is very key. The aim of Digital India was to empower the poorest of the poor. And that's what we have achieved, by the way. And I, you know, some of the numbers I'll present, and this is the digital DNA of India. But these are the three mega trends going on. Number one, Indians are going digital like never before. Two, India is making digital infrastructure as public goods. Now, what does it mean? Can, I mean, I'm a professor also, so I can always ask questions, but really, what does it mean? It really means that whatever technology we are building is non-rent seeking. ONDC we are making is not really free, free, but it's non-rent seeking. There's a big difference between saying something is free 
vis a vis something is non rent seeking non rent seeking means sustainable non seeking non rent seeking means it's there is equitability in that building that platform and we are making digital infrastructure as public goods no country in the world has done that which means that it is equally available to startups to corporates to businesses to fintechs to banks and to the government that's what happened with jio what did jio change that changed the telecom industry not only in india but worldwide they started digital onboarding using the government's ekyc platform that's it brought down the customer acquisition cost from 20 dollars to 1 dollar and that is what has changed so aadhar brought about this revolution in our lives where a billion people participate but really it's the ekyc of dg locker that enabled companies like jio to offer complete digital onboarding experience this is some of the data i was talking about on the data connectivity you know from 269 rupees per gb we are down to 14 rupees an gb on an average and our data consumption has gone up to 17 gb a month uh, also do you also know india is primarily an android country 98% of us use android in india um 95% of android phones now are technically made in india do you know this 95% from having two manufacturing plants in india we have 272 assembling and manufacturing plants in india in the in the last 9 years you have to be proud when you see a, a, a iphone se being made in india a um, iphone 14 being made in india 12 billion dollars worth of iphone exports from india it was un unimaginable a few years ago and now we do it um, everybody talks about upi but what everybody does not talk about upi is that of the 9.3 billion payments we do every month we move about 40% of india's gdp but the biggest thing is we were joked and ridiculed in 2016 and 17 during demonetization me including i was head, head part of the digital payments committee that do you think india will pay 10 rupees on a on a qr code on a mobile phone i think we can give that back to them today today everybody uses in fact i always joke with my nri friends ki how do you identify an nri during uh, the december january season in india they paying by cash cuz all of us don't right and that is what has happened in india and the interesting fact is that of the 9.3 billion payments 300 more than 300 million people actually make a payment in india every month using upi now 300 million cannot be the 5 million rich only 300 million cannot be just the middle class there has to be a combination of all of them and that is the the, the inclusivity the ubiquity that digital uh, payments has done in india everybody is using them you go to, i i studied in a small small but one of the oldest towns in in the world kashi banaras i went to an iit there and i still teach there you go there everybody wants to accept digital payments now if you understand why they want to accept digital payments is a lesson in understanding real consumer real bharat that some of you in delhi and bombay don't understand and i have done a full research on that a phd level research on why people in india are accepting digital payments not because it's free that's one of the reasons but because it gives them efficiency and the second point i think they can call some harvard economist and teach them that the third point on efficiency is very big because he says sir i have to now 12 rupees if i have to pay, sell something i have to give 8 rupees change that takes my time or i have to give them the useless candies useless for him not for the company that makes it that's gone now he says i they come they scan the code they go away the speaker speaks 12 rupees received i don't waste my time serving one consumer i can serve more consumers but the last point leaves economist baffled he says i can do pricing at the way i can i want to price it i can price at 12.5 rupees now if my real cost is 12.5 to sold yesterday i was rounding off to 15 or 20 that was inflationary for the consumer today actual price is 12.5 i don't worry about giving the right price that is what upi has changed and to get the deep insight you need to travel to india to the real bharat um ondc koshi uh, uh, dr batra talked about it i'll come to that that's the next revolution suddenly inspired 
by all this adoption of digital payments in India, and I'll talk about one more thing that we, I mean, Coven, uh, he talked about. How many of you know that you can get and schedule a Coven appointment on one of the most popular apps in the world? H has anybody tried this? The number 9013151515. This is a Coven bot, a MyGov bot. You save it in a WhatsApp, send a message, schedule an appointment, get your uh, vaccine certificate. I never carry my vaccine certificate the printout or whatever. Americans carry a card. The Silicon Valley carries a paper card. We carry a WhatsApp number. You send a WhatsApp saying certificate, it will send you an OTP, you'll get your certificate there and then only. Has anybody tried that? Please do. Some of you have. You Now, most of the, because the pandemic technically is over, so nobody asked for vaccine certificate, there was a time that you had to go to a mall, you had to show a vaccine certificate. Right? We have, we have it online. But what did, what did this thing do? The messaging is very important. 1.1 billion Indians in less than two years got vaccinated. 2.3 billion doses got done. Can any platform in the world boast of that, those numbers? Any platform, I challenge it. But delivered with a lot of complexity at the background, simplicity in the front end. The front end is what? Could be your Coven website or could be even a WhatsApp. Because Six, seven hundred million people in India have used WhatsApp. Makes it simple. The, the digital public infrastructure makes technology simple for the consumer. Remember, bottom up. Visa vis and removes the complexity and moves it in the background. And that is the game changer that we have done. That's how you get adoption at the bottom of the pyramid. And that is what we are building with ONDC. A population scale intervention like the UPI to democratize e-commerce e in India. So. Uh, Interoperable, you can buy things on e-commerce, um, on using any app, why can't you do that? You can use an existing app, a phone pay, a Paytm, a banking app to buy and, you know, buy, uh, to hail a taxi, to order your goods, to, to order your, you know, uh, food and grocery. Yep, why not? And non-rent seeking. So what does the non-rent seeking do? It gives more, con more power to the retailer, to the trader. Instead of sharing a 30%, 20-30% commission, they probably can live with 5%, which is affordable to them. That is why credit card and debit card acceptance was low. The MDR reduction, making it zero because of UPI, brought in the digital payments. The, the reduction in commission is going to change the way we do e-commerce in India. And the previous slide did talk about what we are going to see as a growth. You know, we are going to see a, a, a 3x, 4x growth in the next couple of years. So that is what ONDC is going to do. Uh, this, is a re this is a small revolution that happened in India that nobody actually really paid attention to. Fast tax. A great experiment in digital and change management. We enforced fast tag on all lanes in India, all toll bridges in India. Today, 98% of Indians, 98% use fast tag. Why? Number one, the real cost of the toll is let's say 100 rupees. On fast tag, it's 50 rupees. Two, you don't have to wait. You don't. The real, India figured out, Bharat figured out that they are wasting time and burning more petrol waiting in a queue if they don't have fast tag. They adopted it. People don't get this very fast anywhere in the world. Kadak, get fast tag. And there's a guy standing, uh, there used to be, person standing right about 100 meters before the, the, the toll and saying, Abhi kharid lije. I will link it to your UPI in two minutes. That's how it got adopted. Small entrepreneurs, national level uh, infrastructure, everybody adopted it. Today, we collect more than 40,000 crores of fast tag. Revenue, 6 billion, 48,000, 50,000 crores. All on digital. Government is benefiting, even though we're giving a discount, because now there is no chori at the uh, toll bridges. It's all, most of these uh, toll bridges, uh, toll roads are run on a revenue share basis. We get the real revenue. But what does it tell? 98% means every, almost every car in India, every vehicle in India is following a fast tag. And very short span of two years. So, uh, revolutions can happen very fast in this country. You just have to give them the right technology, right reasons, um, very, very fast. S Startup India is a great example. Um, because uh, there was a talk of funding winter. Uh, you know, I don't call it a funding winter. A winter is a winter, 
and you're not prepared for it if you go out in the cold and you're not wearing the proper clothing. We have the proper clothing. We have the right policies, right infrastructure. We have had our, our, uh, our governance cowboys who have gone out there and done nonsense. And that, that will continue all everywhere in the world. Uh, but, you know, the government runs a fund of fund scheme, which I'm uh, very proud to be part of. It's a, it's a sizable fund for Indian uh, venture capital funds. We give, uh, Monday we had a meeting, we give 126 allotee in India a venture fund, which is, then goes and invests in other uh, funds, uh, an allotment. So we are ensuring that there is, whether there is a funding winter or not, we are properly equipped. Um, 86, 87,000 startups in India. PLI scheme for manufacturing. And, uh, you know, you should ask uh, the manufacturing ecosystem uh, how much support they're getting. Uh, again, a very small trend, but a very interesting trend. Not a small trend, though. Again, all of us who have invested in equity markets in India know that it was always meant for the two, uh, 20 million richest, richest individuals in India. Today, because of the low cost of customer acquisition, something that I'm trying to explain in this slide, uh, we have the likes of, uh, you know, we have almost 2 million DMAT accounts being added every month. 20 million total were there, now we have 2 million every month. We have almost 105 million, 10 crore plus people having a DMAT account in India in the last 2 to 3 years. And that's why you've seen companies like Zero that are really doing very, very well. Um, last few things and then I will, uh, you know, leave it uh, for some thoughts and comments. India's digital story, if something we have to think about, something you have to learn to adopt and think, is happening because we have open innovation, which is built on the back of this public infrastructure, digital public infrastructure. It's built on two, two other very important uh, concepts, scale. Nothing is done from a, from a national level if it does not have scale. You know, we saw an ad uh, of a company, and I'm, uh, much congratulations to them. They're talking about 40 million downloads. That's 4 crore, that's less than 3% population in India. Right? But a, a startup can be proud of a 40 crore download. The government is not proud when it, unless it reaches 10 to, uh, 100 to 200 million people. That's the minimum benchmark. At MyGov, I had 225 million citizens that I talked and impacted every month. If it is not a number less than 100 million, I don't think so. I will have the audience with the, the digital leadership of India. So the vision is scale. Second vision is speed. All these things, I've talked about speed of fast track. I've talked about speed of ONDC. People thought it will never succeed. It's, we, here we are. Last year on 29th April 2022, we launched ONDC in a beta phase. We were doing zero transaction. That was a launch date. On 29th April 2023, we are doing, or, or, or right now, we are doing almost 100,000 transactions a day. Not, not like 5, 10, 100,000. 100,000 a day, that's a 3 million run rate a month. By the way, if you compare it apples to apple with UPI, we are far ahead. So you know where the, in 5 years where the adoption will happen. When I used to present UPI in 2017, I had to tell people, we do 5 million transactions a month. Today we are talking in billions. Millions have gone to billions. I'm very sure that's what is going to happen with ONDC also. So, agile policy making, I talked about that, and digital infrastructure at par with the physical and social infrastructure. So, that is what is, um, what is happening. And because somebody talked about generative AI and um, what you should also study, and, 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 and the, uh, the app local, if the people are here, do come and meet me. We're very, very passionate at a national level to make priority in national uh, languages of India in the mother tongues of India and the local languages of India. We are building what is called a project Bhashini, that NLP in our own language. Why should we have Western models for large data models, large language models? We need our own data models. And project Bhashini is all about that. Making sure India's languages, India's culture, India's diversity is, is represented uh, when the AI engines uh, pick up data and make the, you know, give out answers. So, uh, you, should, you should be studying about, um, about the Bhashini project if you, are, uh, per, if you are passionate about Bharat and India. Uh, with that, thank you very much. I, as I said, um, I had uh, 20 minutes of time. I have kept within time Dr. Batra. 
but more importantly, I have communicated what I wanted to communicate thanks to uh, the, the precursors from uh, Dr. Anurag Batra and of course Nandan. And um, uh, I'm happy to answer any questions if you have, I'm outside around. But uh, believe me, this is the time that, uh, uh, that we have always thought about India leading the world. Uh, and I, I would leave this room with a simple quote that uh, while the Silicon Valley, in India, my Shenzhen Valley doesn't operate. The Chinese valleys don't operate. You know that, right? But while the Silicon, Silicon Valley companies will innovate for the top billion, you and me and India will innovate for the next seven billion of the world. Thank you very much.